So we're back. We're back on the Scholar. Uh, we're definitely going to be racing it this year. Um, I have been doing a, a few small jobs and ordering parts in. Hopefully we'll be able to shake down soon. I've only got a, a few small things I need to do to do the shakedown. You can see there's actually quite a long list of things and you'll notice some of them have got stars on. The ones with stars mean that I need to complete them to actually, um, actually go and do a shakedown, whereas the rest of them need to be done uh, to actually go racing. So there's actually not many things left to do. So let me show you what I've done and what's left to do. The first thing you'll probably notice, except for the go-kart in the corner, is that the garage has been cleared out so I can actually have space to work on this. I've replaced a lot of the fixings um, that were bolts with um, clevis pins and uh, like this. Um, I'll show you an example. Play this pins with an R clip and then I've usually put some rubber in there as well just to take up the slack. These clips will just pull out and you'll be able to maintain the car quite quickly and get access to things in a very short space of time. You'll notice here as well the exhaust is off the car. It's almost fouling and you can almost see the, the, a, bit of, um, a bit of after effect of heat. And if you look at the exhaust itself, you can see a bit of fouling from, um, from it, um, just touching the corner. I had originally used these 5mm spacers to space it out because I knew it was too tight um, but clearly it's not quite enough so I've gone and bought an, uh, an exhaust manifold um, piece that's um, quite a lot thicker uh, so that should bring it out another 7mm. It does mean that I've got to change the exhaust studs. Four longer ones which I've done so I've bought in some longer exhaust studs. Other issues have been the bodywork and you can see here I've created a bracket here to hold the, um, the front clam on and another bracket here for the fuel pressure regulator that was just hanging loose and uh, on the other side so another bracket here again with a clevis pin to um, hold the uh, clamshell on. Let's crack on with this exhaust. This is where we have to do a bit of finagling because getting that exhaust through that hole and onto the studs is a bit of a faff. So the next task is actually creating a panel to stop air going into the engine bay. I'm just wondering if this is actually enough. It's a bit of a mess at the moment and needs tidying up. I might do the battery box first and then make a decision on what I'm going to do. Down there you can see I've got this metal strip and this is for um, mounting the battery and I'm, I'm not massively happy with it so I've bought this. It's um, a universal battery holder. It's quite a lot bigger than the battery we've got, but it was going to be easier and cheaper to modify this than to make something. It's not going to go in as is. Chop it up. Took a while, but you can see the battery box is now mounted in there. Oh, but she's in. Battery and everything. Let's mount this exhaust and put some safety wire on so it doesn't move about. Not too bad. I'm pretty sure that's not the correct way to lock wire something, but at least that isn't going to go anywhere. You can see the exhaust outlet there. Fortunately, it's right close to the tire, and there's not much we can do about that right now. Um, there's a bit of a cut out there, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to um, 
cut that bit of fiberglass away and create a little bit of a heat shield for it. Well, I've never really shaped metal before, but I'm not actually too displeased with that. I've got a rivet here, and I'm gonna put a washer behind the fiberglass, just to give it a bit of um, metal to go against. I'm going to try and keep a lot of this radiator cowling that I've built already. Um, I have actually put in a piece in here that will go inside just to block the airflow where the oil cooler was. So that should force most of the air up through the radiator. This is the uh, radiator cowling. It's probably the worst thing I'm, I've ever made. Um, but I need it to do a certain job and um, it is quite a complicated shape so I will forgive myself. And I, I'm gonna wanna redo it at some point. But I mean, even here you can see that the holes are oversized so much. I've had to put, it's hard to see, but I've had to put a, a washer behind the Clico just to, just to hold it in. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but um, yeah, I'm going to continue to wrap this up and uh, rivet it so that it stays in one shape and um, we'll get it on the car hopefully uh, in an hour or so. You can see that the, the cowling is in for the radiator. And I've filled up a lot of the gaps with um, sponge here. And obviously there's a massive gap down there, so I might put some aluminium tape in there just to seal it up. And then the next job is this. You can see how they're just loosely in there because the, and same on this side, the, um, this material is not, it's not particularly strong. So I'm gonna reinforce it somehow with some sheet, either above and below or some, uh, you know, some bushings in between. Uh, so we can um, basically clamp between the bushings rather than the, um, the actual soft piece here.